Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless here she is again hanoi jane hilton uh, first she was for uh our opponents in the vietnam war and now she believes she suggests that it's okay to murder pro-life advocates mm. she was on the view yesterday here's what hanoi jane said Besides, besides marching and, and protesting, what else do you suggest? Well, well it doesn't happen murder. overnight. It's not a miraculous, <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> murder. <laughs> She's kidding. Wait a second. She's just now, kidding. Don't say that. They tried to cover for her. But they also laughed along. I don't know if that's an awkward laugh at the horrendousness of what she had to suggest. <laughs> she just suggested for her political opponents murder. You know, when I first heard this clip, it was sent to me yesterday. Um, by my sister, and I listened to it, and the first thing I thought is, don't we have enough murder in this issue? I mean, isn't that what we're actually really talking about? The irony that she would use the word murder um, when we're talking about the murdering of little babies, millions, um, tens of millions. Let's not forget, we have, at this moment, uh, you know, domestic terrorist pro-choice groups, pro-abortion groups, uh, firebombing, uh, pregnancy crisis centers that are, you know, offering free diapers and, you know, formula and clothes to women who choose to have their babies. And so um, th this, it is really unfortunate, but it actually speaks to that, to that movement. We talked about the zealots, the climate zealots. There are zealots in this movement too, and they are definitely on the pro-abortion side. This yeah. is their religion. Um, this is their altar. And um, sadly, it's children that yeah. are sacrificed on Some it. There's a correlation between child sacrifice in the Old Testament and modern day abortion. The Bible contains the heartbreaking tale of child sacrifice practiced in the name of Molech, a god of the Ammonites. Molech worship was practiced by the Ammonites and Canaanites, who revered Molech as a protecting father figure. Images of Molech were made of bronze and their outstretched arms were heated and red hot. Living children were then placed into the idol's hands and died there or were rolled into a fire pit below. God gave the people of Israel a dire warning concerning child sacrifice and Molech worship as we read in Leviticus 20 verses 1 and 2. Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Again, ye shall say to the children of Israel, Whoever of the children of Israel or of the strangers who dwell in Israel who gives any of his descendants to Molech, he shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. Sadly, King Solomon became involved in this horrendous practice, as recorded in 1 Kings 11, 6-8. Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and did not fully follow the Lord, as did his father David. Then Solomon built a high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, on the hill that is east of Jerusalem, and from Molech, the abomination of the people of Ammon. And he did likewise for all his foreign wives, who burned incense and sacrificed to their gods. Later, the evil king Manasseh offered his own son as a sacrifice, as did King Ahaz. The people of Judah also participated in this crime against their own sons, a sin so detestable that God said, it had never even crossed his mind, as we read in Jeremiah 32, 35. And they built the high places of Baal, which are in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire to Molech, which I did not command them, nor did it come into my mind that they should do this abomination, to cause Judah to sin. In modern society, unprecedented numbers of children have been sacrificed at the hands of abortionists for the sake of convenience, immorality, and pride. Millions of babies have been sacrificed 
so that their parents can maintain a certain lifestyle. God hates hands that shed innocent blood, and we can be sure that God will judge this horrendous sin. Well, Republican lawmakers have written to the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists demanding answers about the organization's recent exclusion of a pro-life doctors association from its annual conference. Here's the chief religion correspondent, Lauren Green. You're not going to be allowed to have a booth here because you're pro-life. That's an absolute slap in the face to the 86 percent, I think, of OBGYNs who have no interest in performing abortions. As the abortion battle in the post-Roe v. Wade world continues, members of Congress are demanding to know why the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists abruptly banned a pro-life doctors group from an annual conference for medical educators. Texas Congressman Chip Roy, joined by four other lawmakers, Chris Smith of New Jersey, Virginia Virginia Fox of North Carolina and Diana Harshbarger of Tennessee. They sent a letter to ACOG calling its position hypocritical and outrageous. Stop preaching to me from your freaking doctor's office, okay? If a doctor wants to choose to stand up for life, let them. In response to a Fox inquiry, the American College of OBGYN stated in part, it welcomes exhibitors that align with our shared commitment to the advancement of evidence-based scientific information. The head of American Association of Pro-Life Doctors says their findings are scientifically based. We have medical evidence to back up everything we say about the, the harms of abortion on our patients. On its website, ACOG states it considers abortion essential health care. Republican members of Congress are also calling on the American College of OBGYNs to end its discrimination of pro-life doctors and will press for immediate changes to what they call unacceptable behavior. There is good news for anyone who has had an abortion, and that is that God offers forgiveness to anyone who confesses their sins, as we read in 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 2 Timothy 3, 1-13 But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power, and from such people turn away. For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women, loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Jans and Jambres resisted Moses, so do these also resist the truth men of corrupt minds, disapproved concerning the faith. But they will progress no further, for their folly will be made manifest to all, as theirs also was. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Cancel culture is good for democracy. Well, that's the, the opinion of people who believe that freedom of speech only applies to particular points of view. Now, a new movement is underway to blacklist certain speech by labeling it disinformation. The goal is to convince companies to stop advertising on conservative websites. Companies are being steered away from spending advertising dollars with conservative news websites by what's been labeled a stealth blacklisting operation. The British Global Disinformation Index says its mission is to disrupt the business model of disinformation. To reduce disinformation, we need to remove the financial incentive to create it. The index has the potential to economically strangle some conservative websites. Investigative reporter Gabe Kaminsky uncovered the operation for the Washington Examiner. So GDI compiles a secretive uh, dynamic exclusion list, essentially a blacklist, 
of the websites that it determines to be the biggest purveyors of disinformation online. The Global Disinformation Index lists the 10 riskiest websites for companies to advertise with. All are conservative or libertarian, including the New York Post, Reason, the Daily Wire, and the American Conservative. They're accused of things like lack of transparency, bias, or omissions of pertinent information. We asked the senior editor at the American conservative, Rod Dreher, for his response to the claim his website is risky. My response is, we are an opinion magazine. Of course we're biased. Liberal opinion magazines are biased too. But no liberal or mainstream media websites are listed as risky by the index which is funded by several foundations, including George Soros Open Society Foundations, and even the U.S. government through the National Endowment for Democracy. Or at least it was until members of Congress got wind and the funding was canceled. This is only the latest wave of cancel culture to hit conservatives, who have already been shadow banned, deplatformed, debanked, and even mentioned for deprogramming. And the question is, how are we going to really almost deprogram these people? As conservatives began to be banned from social media, they thought that at least they would be safe on their own websites. But the censors have followed. While Republicans in Congress are vowing to investigate the Global Disinformation Index, Dreher, the author of The Benedict Option, A Strategy for Christians in a Post-Christian Nation, does not believe this censorship campaign will stop anytime soon. Yeah, I, I don't think it ever will stop because the other side, they're motivated by a religious fervor. They are fighting evil and you can't tolerate evil. They have identified uh, the enemy. The enemy are those who were uh, so-called deplorables, including conservative Christians and others, who they will deem to be threats, and therefore they can be marginalized. John 15, 18 through 20. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you're not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. In the book of Job, chapter 37, 5 through 13, we learn that God controls the weather. God thunders marvelously with his voice. He does great things which we cannot comprehend. For he says to the snow, fall on the earth, likewise to the gentle rain and the heavy rain of his strength. He seals the hand of every man, that all men may know his work. The beasts go into dens and remain in their lairs. From the chamber of the south comes the whirlwind, and cold from the scattering winds of the north. By the breath of God ice is given and the broad waters are frozen. Also with moisture he saturates the thick clouds, he scatters his bright clouds, and they swirl about, being turned by his guidance, that they may do whatever he commands them on the face of the whole earth. He causes it to come, whether for correction, or for his land, or for mercy. Correction is the Hebrew word, Shabbat, which means, literally, a stick for punishing, writing, fighting, ruling, walking, etc. Job 37.13 can be translated like this. He causes it to come, whether for punishment, or for his land, or for mercy. God controls the weather for three reasons. For punishment, for his land, or for mercy. 
The extreme weather we have been witnessing is clearly punishment. We begin with that deadly flooding emergency right here in California. The state facing another round of heavy rain after a devastating parade of winter storms. 11 million people under flood alerts across the West through midweek. The unrelenting rain turning towns into rivers. Emergency crews rescuing drivers trapped in rising floodwaters after a levee breached in Monterey County. Thousands of residents forced to leave their homes. Here's a satellite image of that so-called atmospheric river bearing down on the state. The system massive in size, higher elevations facing even more snow and dangerous winds. This section of Highway 1 in Big Sur forced to shut down after a catastrophic landslide caused severe damage. Another storm system wreaking havoc in parts of the Great Lakes into the Northeast, causing hazardous road conditions in Erie, Pennsylvania. ABC's senior meteorologist Rob Marciano leading us off tonight from the storm zone. Tonight, first responders rescuing stranded drivers from life-threatening floodwaters after a levee breach in Monterey County, California. Time to evacuate. Water is coming. Rescuers going door to door, warning residents to leave after a 100-foot wide breach in the levee on the Pajaro River. More than 8,000 people forced to flee. These families stuck on a bridge waiting for transport to nearby shelters. 11 million people under flood alerts tonight. Dramatic new drone video showing a raging river tearing through Kernville, California. Look how violent that water is. Officials ordering evacuations in Kern County as well. At least two deaths have been reported. California and Nevada declaring states of emergency. The entire West struggling to deal with the 11th atmospheric river event, dumping up to a foot of rain the past week. In Santa Cruz, heavy rain causing massive flooding and damaging roads, stranding residents like Gabby David. Can't go to work and can't do um, everyday normal errands. This section of Highway 1 and Big Sur forced to shut down after this rock slide damaged the road. Water pouring over the side. For the first time in nearly four years, they're actually releasing water from one of the state's largest reservoirs, rolling down the Oroville spillway at 8,000 cubic feet per second. And in Lake Tahoe, historic amounts of snowfall, another 32 inches in some areas. People who have been here for a very long time have said this is more snow than they've ever seen. Where I'm standing used to be a road. It was wiped out when heavy rains and melting snow flooded the community. I mean, really, just imagine what it was like, the power of the force to toss all these boulders and trees around with water inundating homes. Entire neighborhoods submerged after heavy rains flooded parts of California. I think I got visual on them. Copy, we got it. We got visual. Nearly 200 people had to be rescued by first responders and the National Guard over the weekend. Monterey County officials issued multiple evacuation orders last night along the Salinas River, stretching nearly 30 miles. In the city of Pajaro, a levee breach forced thousands of farm workers like Isaac Martinez to evacuate their homes and likely lose out on work. In the summer, I work in the fields, yeah. pick, picking berries, yeah. and uh, I think this year is going to be hard for them. It's, the water's uh, too high. California grows more than a third of the country's vegetables and three quarters of its fruits and nuts, all threatened by constant flooding this winter. Lettuce, strawberries, the top crops that are grown in these fields, there's going to be an impact to our nation's food supply. Rapid snowmelt from warm downpours overwhelmed rivers in the Sierra foothills in Central Valley, causing major flooding in Springville. The water was up to the um, bottom of that green molding on the house right there. Crystal McGee and her husband fled when the water started pouring into their home. We left everything. We had to leave everything. And um, there's photo books that are on the on the floor, in the mud, and you know, and that those are things that cannot be replaced. We've got a break in the weather right now, but it will not last for long. If you can believe it, we've got another atmospheric river in the forecast. Is It is expected to hit later tonight and soak these already waterlogged communities through Tuesday. In the news these days, we read about and see devastating events, each more unusual, destructive, and unprecedented than the last. They are happening more frequently and more intensely, just as the Bible said would happen just before the return of Jesus Christ. It seems as though God has lifted his hand of protection from the United States, and not just the U.S., but the world as well. These devastating events are not accidents, nor are they merely the natural cycle of things. The world is enduring events that are designed to bring about the end of days and cause us to repent.
God is lifting his hand of protection from the nations of the world. No, things will never get back to normal. They will only get worse. Historic floods are devastating the outback community of Burke Town, which is tonight still in the grip of an unfolding emergency. The true devastation of this disaster won't be known for days, but already the damage bill is confirmed to be in the millions. The Gulf, a disaster zone. The worst flooding in living memory in Burke Town, creeping water levels reaching record heights. Homes are destroyed, town services, power cut off, livelihoods, livestock lost. These helpless cattle wading through water to safety but taking a risk in croc country. The croc threat is a risk many locals aren't prepared to take with their pets. Many people have been evacuated. Yep. Around 60, though, chose to stay, told to conserve water and supplies until animals can be evacuated too. We are here still on the ground working together to ensure that um, as much of our belongings and homes and animals are still looked after. Tropical Cyclone Freddy has unleashed powerful winds, heavy rain and floods in Mozambique for the second time. At least 28 people have been killed and tens of thousands of homes have been damaged. Freddy is the Southern Hemisphere's longest-lasting tropical cyclone on record. Mozambique has seen more than a year's worth of rain in the past four weeks. The UN says more than half a million people could face a humanitarian crisis in one of the world's poorest nations. Many people have been urged to move to temporary shelters. Cyclone Freddy battered central Mozambique on Sunday after making landfall for a second time in a month breaking records for the duration and strength of tropical storms in the southern hemisphere. Footage released by UNICEF shows strong winds and heavy rain hitting the central port town of Keliman as residents battled the storm. Communications and electricity supply in the storm area have been cut, so the extent of the damage and number of casualties was not immediately clear. But more than 171,000 people were affected after the cyclone swept through southern Mozambique last month. 27 people died across Mozambique and Madagascar. More than half a million are at risk of being affected in Mozambique this time around, according to the UN Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs. Climate change is making hurricanes stronger, scientists say. Oceans absorb much of the heat from greenhouse gas emissions, and when warm seawater evaporates, its heat energy is transferred to the atmosphere, fueling more destructive storms. There are two key prophecies concerning Jesus' signs of his coming and the end of the age that are crucial to discerning that we are living in the last days. The first prophecy is found in Matthew 24, 8. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. This is how end time signs such as wars, famines, pestilences, and earthquakes will occur. They will become more frequent and more intense as we get closer to Jesus' return. The second prophecy is in Luke 21, 28. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. Notice Jesus said when these things begin to happen. Jesus was saying that when you see a convergence of Bible prophecy, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. We are witnessing not only the convergence of Bible prophecy around the world, we are experiencing the frequency and intensity of these prophetic events as well. It's a story that's become all too common in Somalia. After the crops and cattle on their farm were decimated by drought, Faduma Ali and her seven children were forced to flee towards the nearest city, a perilous week-long journey which they didn't all survive. I fled to my home after the drought hit our farm and we lost all our animals. We walked for seven days. One of my children didn't make it. Faduma now lives in a makeshift camp on the outskirts of Baidoa, some 250 kilometers west of Mogadishu. The city hosts around 600,000 refugees, all forcefully displaced by conflicts in climate change. The International Organization for Migration, which administers the camp, has been doing its best to welcome these families, but with resources stretched to the limit, it can only provide the most basic of services. Somalia is experiencing one of its worst droughts on record, with five consecutive seasons of insufficient rain. A drought that's expected to continue in 2023, potentially displacing another 300,000 people by the summer. Psalm 107, 33 and 34. He turns rivers into a wilderness, 
and the water springs into dry ground, a fruitful land into barrenness, for the wickedness of those who dwell in it. Jesus, speaking to his disciples about the signs of his coming and the end of the age, declares this in Matthew 24, 12. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The Bible tells us lawlessness is the violation of God's commandments, as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another, for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. Now to that horrific crime near Seattle, Washington. A podcaster and her husband allegedly killed by a stalker. Police say a 38-year-old truck driver from Texas broke into the couple's home and shot them before turning the gun on himself, taking his own life. The woman had filed a protective order against him. Here's ABC's DeMarco Morgan. Tonight, police say this man, 38-year-old Ramin Hodakaram Rezaei, stalked, shot, and killed podcaster Zori Sadegi and her husband before appearing to take his own life. They have uh, the active hostage situation. The shooter is not detained. A neighbor says their security camera caught the commotion overnight. It was blood-curdling to hear. Investigators say Hodakaram Rezaei listened to Sadegi's live podcast for people who speak Farsi looking for jobs in the tech industry and befriended her through a chat app. They communicated, but things quickly escalated. This is the absolute worst outcome um, you know, for uh, a stalking case. This is every uh, victim, every detective, every police chief's worst nightmare. ABC News has learned just a week before her death, Sadegi filed a request for an order of protection against the suspect, alleging in chilling detail a pattern of behavior that made the 33-year-old fear for her safety. According to the order, Sadegi said the gunman left her voicemails more than 10 times a week, sending flowers, even sending her husband more than 20 messages a day, writing, he won't let me go. And the only thing that will make all of this stop is if he killed himself or died. Also saying her stalker was delusional, writing these delusions make me fear for my life and the lives of my loved ones. In this case, the victim did everything that they possibly could. It is a tragic event. The Bible tells us in the last days that people would lack sympathetic understanding, that people would be unfeeling and pitiless toward their own family. As we read in 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5, the snow also, that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such, turn away. Without natural affection is the Greek word astorgos, which means without affection for family, parents or children, thus hard-hearted towards kindred. This is exactly what we are seeing in our world today. We begin with breaking news in Ellis County. Three children found dead and two others rushed to a hospital with stab wounds. Sources tell us the suspect is the children's mother and is in custody tonight. What happened here on this street in this tiny community behind me is simply unfathomable. A mother, police say, stabbing her own children, three of them to death. Believe me when I tell you something like this that happened on this tiny street in this tiny community has sent a titanic shockwave through so many here in Italy, Texas. It is unknown what sparked the killings, but WFAA sources telling us the mother stabbed her children when a CPS worker who suspected the mom was having unsupervised visitations arrived at a home on the street where the children lived to check on everyone unannounced. The children, we were told, were living with another relative at the time. Police telling us that CPS worker called 911 when she found all of them dead. Three of the children, all young, two more taken to the hospital, their injuries unknown tonight. 
According to the Pentagon, China is adding to its nuclear arsenal and with the help of Russia could soon surpass the U.S. stockpile. National security correspondent Caitlin Burke is following the story. Caitlin, does the U.S. still have a nuclear edge? Jenna, newly unclassified information from the Pentagon makes clear that while China is quickly gaining, it has not yet surpassed U.S. nuclear capabilities. At the end of 2022, however, the communist power had amassed more intercontinental range missile launchers, or ICBMs. So that means kind of the, the holes uh, that they would be able to put uh, long-range missiles in uh, capable of, of striking the U.S. homeland. Uh, and so this is just the, the latest step in, in China's buildup. While many of China's ICBMs remain empty, their strategic partnership with Russia is a concern. Russia is providing fuel uh, for China's reactors that produce uh, nuclear material, these, these reactors that produce plutonium. Uh, and plutonium is uh, the important nuclear material that China needs for its nuclear buildup. U.S. intelligence officials predict Beijing will soon be able to produce enough weapons-grade plutonium to increase its nuclear warhead stockpile as much as fourfold in the next 12 years. Those nuclear warheads would likely fill the now empty ICBMs. That kind of a buildup would also allow China to match the arsenals currently deployed by the U.S. and Russia. China is, is refusing to sit down and negotiate with us. Um, to me, that tells us that China is on an upwards trajectory and it has it has no interest in negotiating or uh, stalling it, its nuclear buildup. Shortly after the Chinese spy balloon dust-up, President Xi Jinping pressed military leaders for an even faster elevation of his armed forces. Meanwhile, Russia backed out of a nuclear arms control treaty with the U.S., leading experts to urge the Pentagon to develop a new strategy. We can't simply just try and try again for, for arms control if it's not working. We'll, we'll have to do everything we can to strengthen uh, our own nuclear deterrent and make sure we're building uh, the right capabilities that we need to uh, deter Russia and China and make sure that they can't ever think that, even as they, they build up their nuclear weapons, that they can get away with using them. The Heritage Foundation's Patty Jane Geller, a senior policy analyst for nuclear deterrence and missile defense, says U.S. capabilities have thus far stayed the same as Russia and China compete in an unofficial arms race to nuclear dominance. The problem is the leaders in the arms race are Russia and China. The United States has not quite entered it yet. Senior Pentagon officials say the U.S. is working to modernize all three legs of its land, sea and air-based arsenals. The question remains whether the pace will be quick enough to keep our adversaries at bay. A message of warning from Pyongyang. Two missile launches just hours before joint military exercises by Seoul and Washington this Monday. The drill, dubbed Freedom Shield, was on an unprecedented scale since 2017. The Allies say it's in response to the increased threats from North Korea. Now that North Korea has nearly succeeded in miniaturizing and making lighter tactical nuclear weapons and secured at least dozens of warheads, we've come to a point where it is difficult to justify the rationale that we should refrain from developing nuclear weapons and stick to the cause of denuclearization. Some in South Korea, though, have voiced their opposition, saying the drills could lead to direct confrontation. I think that continuing to conduct military drills can be seen as an act of provocation for North Korea. It could eventually turn into a conflict. Pyongyang says such exercises are rehearsals for invasion of its territory, the justification it uses to continue developing its nuclear weapons program. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un ordered his troops last week to step up military maneuvers to simulate real war. Since declaring itself as a nuclear weapon state, a move which Kim calls irreversible, North Korea has conducted a series of ballistic missile tests in violation of UN resolutions. Luke 21, 26 through 28. Men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ and turning to God in faith for salvation. Turning from sin is not the definition of repentance, but it is one of the results of genuine faith-based repentance towards the Lord Jesus Christ. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.